Hi class. So today we're going to be learning about function inverses. So you'll be learning how to write an equation that is the inverse of a linear function. So I need you to have paper out and something to write with, okay? This is a video made by another person, but I'm just going to play it for you um, to watch. So I will let you know when it's time to write something. So just kind of listen and then I will stop the video and tell you when to write. Here we go. Do you remember a special type of function called a one-to-one -one function? Well, what made it special? First of all, every element in the domain was paired with a unique element in the range. That's what made it a function, period. What makes it a one-to-one -one function is that it works the other way as well. It's a special type of function that every element in the range is paired with a unique element in the domain. In other words, it works backwards. Every x is paired with only one y, and every y is paired with only one x. Now, while a function is basically a path, if you would, to get from x to y, the inverse of a function is the way to get back, I say to get back, from y back to x. Now, consider the reason we're talking about one-to-one -one functions is, unless you're working with a one-to-one -one function that works both ways, if you would, there isn't a way back. So you only have an inverse of a function, or a function only has an inverse if it is, in fact, originally a one-to-one -one function. Otherwise, there's no way back anyway. Now, this relation... It is a function. It gets the function seal of approval. Because no x is paired with more than one y. The inverse of it would be just flipping the domain and the range. It's very simple, but that's the idea of the inverse. The inverse is going to map the range back to the domain, or the y's back to the axis. Now this isn't always that simple. Let's look at this relation. Well, remember what we said, um, a function is when the ordered pairs, you don't have any x values that repeat. So this is a function right here. Okay, no x values are repeating, the, the, the ones in red, okay? So watch what happens next. Now, every x is paired with only one y. So it is a function. It does get the function seal of approval. All the x's are, in fact, different. If we try to find the inverse of it, basically by flipping the x's and the y's, well, in this case, all the x's aren't different. So while it would have been an inverse, it's not an inverse function. And the reason for that, the inverse isn't a function, is because the original function wasn't a one-to-one -one function. So the inverse function of the original um, has x values that repeat. So the inverse is not a function. So we won't be working with any type of functions that have an inverse that is not a function. So we'll have functions that are called one-to-one. -one. The original will be a function, no x values repeated. And the inverse will also be a function, no x values repeated either. Okay? Here is how we find the inverse formula of a function. There's four steps. A lot of this is just notation changes. For instance, the first step is to replace the f of x with what it really is, the y. Then, we're actually going to interchange the x and the y in the equation, flip them, and then here's something you should be good at. We're going to solve for y. Once we've solved for y and we've got y by itself, we're going to 
going to replace that y with the notation for f inverse of x, and that's written f minus 1 of x. Okay, it doesn't mean to the negative 1 power. It means the inverse function of x. Okay, I pause the video. I need you guys to write this down in your notes. Title this to find the inverse formula of a function. There are four steps. Label it 1, 2, 3, 4. First one is replace f of x with y. Next, interchange, or you could put swap, swap x and y. Step three, solve the equation for y. And then last, replace y with f minus 1 parentheses x. Again, that just means this function that you just came up with is called the inverse function. And instead of having to write the long word inverse function, we just put f negative 1 parentheses x to to represent the inverse function, okay? All right, um, please pause this video until students are finished writing and then unpause again. I don't understand. Okay, well, let's try one. We're going to try and find the inverse of this function, f of x. The first thing we'll do is replace f of x with y. Okay, there you go. Second step. Interchange the x and the y. So I'll write the function normally, except I'll interchange the x and the y. Okay, that's the second step. Now the third step is to do whatever it takes to solve for y. In other words, get y by itself. Now who's keeping y from being by itself? If you look at them, the 4 is. So I'll subtract 4 from both sides. And y will equal x minus 4. That's basically the inverse function, but for notation's sake, the fourth step is to replace the y part with the notation for that, f inverse of x. And that's the inverse. That's the inverse function of x in this case. Recall that the original function will take any x that you put in, any value for x, and pair it with a new y. It'll, we like to say, map every x to its own unique y. The inverse function is going to get you back from that y back to x. Interestingly enough, you can test whether you're correct, whether you found the correct inverse function by doing something, and on the same picture, graph its inverse. I'm going to show you what happens. Let me graph the original function. I'll get three easy points. Let me plug in 0, 1, and negative 1, because they'll fit on the graph. If I put in a 0, I get 4. If I put in a 1, I get 5. And if I put in a negative 1, I get 3. If I graph these three points, they line up, and there's the original function. y or f of x equals x plus 4. Now, if I do the inverse function, Try the same three points, 0, negative, 0, 1, and negative 1, I get 0, negative 4, 1, negative 3, and negative 1, negative 5. And if I graph those, they also line up. And the inverse function in blue there graphs right there. Now, what will always happen when you graph a function and its inverse function, since 1 is the, if you would, interchanging of x and y, is that they will be a mirror of each other about the line y equals x. I could actually fold this graph on the dotted line, which is the, the graph of the line y equals x, and the red would end up on top of the blue. That will always happen. Okay? So the graphs of inverse functions always mirror each other about the line y equals x. Okay, here's what I need you to write down. The graphs of inverse functions always mirror each other about the line y equals x. There's a little bubble here. I need you to write that down in your notes. Please pause the video now. Let's try okay. another. We're going to find the inverse of this function function f of x equals 3x plus 2. 
we need to find out what function would get us back from y back to x. Well, remember the steps. Replace f of x with y, because that's what it really is. And then rewrite the whole equation interchanging x and y. Okay? Now, solve the equation for y. Get y by itself. Now, I have two things keeping y from being by itself. The 2 and the 3. Let me subtract 2 from both sides. And I'll get uh, x minus 2 there. I can't, can't do anything there. Now, divide both sides by 3 to undo the 3. And y will equal x minus 2 over 3. Now the last step is to replace the y with the notation f inverse of x. This doesn't surprise me much that the inverse of multiplying by 3 and adding 2, the inverse of that is subtracting 2 and dividing by 3. It's just the opposite operations, isn't it? So there's your inverse function. Let's graph yeah, both, both the original, original function, function and its inverse, inverse and see if it mirrors about the line y equals x. You do not have to do this. Just the watch. The function, I'll put in these three values, and I'll get these three points. Now it's a little bit different than our picture before, but they do line up. Now the inverse function, let me get three points for him. Let's see, let me grab those points. Mm, looks different. They do line up. And son of a gun, if you draw the line y equals x, and if you fold it on that dotted line, that red would end up on top of that blue. So, the graphs of inverse functions always mirror each other about the line y equals x, meaning that you could fold your graph over the line y equals x with the dotted line and they fall on top of each other. I want you to notice the tables. It's the table of the original function, 0, 2, 1, 5, negative 1, negative 1. Now, the table for the inverse function is just the exact reverse of that. Okay? You see how this point here, 1, 5, shows up as 5, 1. This point is 0, 2 shows up as 2, 0, negative 1, negative 1, state negative 1, negative 1, okay? So the tables of the two functions will look backwards from each other. The x becomes the y, the y becomes the x, all right? That's why in one of the steps when you do the equation, you swap the x and y variables. That's why you see in the table the x and y variables get switched around, all right? All right, so on the board, you should see um, a textbook page that I assigned. So if there is time in class today, I need to go get the textbook and start on those problems right now. And it is due tomorrow. I will see you tomorrow. Bye.